a couple of thoughts. I'm not trying to tell anybody here how to run their business. I'm going to share a few rudimentary learnings that Frank has discovered in these target markets. I'll take a couple of minutes to do it. India is a democracy. China is communism. It was a communist country. Can I urge you, and what one of the biggest mistakes we found is that we got confused between political ideology and an economic one called capitalism. <laughs> capitalism was alive and well in both economies. Don't confuse it with political ideology. We made that mistake. Um, and that manifests itself with the issue that's been touched upon today with regards to corruption. Can I urge you, make your decisions before you go to those markets as to what you are going to do when you are faced with corruption because you will be faced with corruption at the most unusual levels. I'll give you some examples. And when I talk about communism in China, here are some interesting examples for you. We went to a trade show in Beijing. We disassembled our stand, but we could not let it physically leave the building until we had it actually had a piece of paper approving the removal of the stand from the building. At the end of the day, it cost us 100 RMB to actually get the piece of paper endorsed. It also cost me six hours of time. We were the only people left in the trade, in the trade show exhibition hall at 10 o'clock in the evening because we did not have the piece of paper. Prepare yourselves for the reality of bureaucracy. The other thing we find in China in particular, English is not widely spoken. You'd actually be surprised how much English is actually understood. Uh, be very careful in terms of negotiations uh, when you wish to speak to your own colleagues. I would urge you to recognise English is far more widely understood than perhaps uh, even I recognise. And it's almost caught me up a couple of times. Um, I'd also recommend in, in China, don't underestimate the importance of your own value uh, with regards to your products. We've found that quality is absolutely crucial. Um, they are very used to dealing with Western companies now. Um, they like it, uh, but they will, and they're prepared to pay for quality. <coughs> we've found, perhaps we've been reversed from the findings, that they are less price sensitive in China but they're prepared to pay for quality as long as they receive it. Because in-market presence is the only medium-term option. Uh, I know it's being presented as, as something we should consider. Our experience is it's not an option. We must be in-market. We'll have an office open in China uh, on the 2nd of May. Talking about three critical areas, customers, capabilities, and culture. In both markets, prospective customers are everywhere, which is fantastic. The weakness of that model is prospective customers are everywhere. I kid you not, if, I, if some of my young guys had their way, they would spend their lives on aircraft and trains travelling across China and across India trying to do deals. From that perspective, market segmentation is absolutely crucial. Segmentation, as I mentioned, is the only option for Frankcap. It's very easy to get absolutely overwhelmed by such broad markets, which are a fantastic opportunity. I encourage you, um, segment, segment, segment. And for many organisations that are run by entrepreneurs, they just want to do everything. Resist the temptation. Uh, if you were successful at everything, you couldn't cope with the volume anyway. The numbers are so vast. The market is so big. The numbers are mind-boggling. So we have become very much more focused and we are leveraging into direct marketing and direct email as opposed to trade shows. So we find that while trade shows are good, they have limitations in terms of just how much um, value they really are going to create over the long term. I'd also encourage you to be very aware of macro factors. We know, for example, that 27 million people uh, move from uh, rural China to urban China every year. 27 million people means that it puts population on infrastructure, housing in cities. Uh, you also keep a very close eye on what Chinese government philosophy and uh, policy is with regards to where they want to see growth. For example, the Chinese government right now is supporting uh, economically tremendous growth in the West. So that represents opportunity for us. So we remain very aware of macro factors as well, which we have to do. I would encourage, and that's one thing, we work very hard in terms of the sales engagement model with our people adopt. Uh, this is crucial because it's very easy to hear the word yes. And what you're actually hearing is, yes, I heard what you just said. <laughs> Not, yes, I agree with you. Um, so this is, this is an absolutely crucial piece. Obviously using local expats is, is a very important step, but also defining the engagement model 
that you actually want your people to use so you can get well-qualified leads and information back from you, from the team out in the field. Language is a very important way of building credibility with customers. So the ability to use uh, and preferably use <coughs> expat nationals that have spent some time here, we find are the best fit. An element of being Kiwi-fied, if you will, or frame catalyzed so that they go back in with a good, deep understanding of our culture, both as Kiwis, how we do business, what our norms and ethics are, um, and they also they understand and can bring context to discussions because m many of our discussions with our customers are quite technically orientated. So expats we find are immensely useful. One other aspect about the FTA in China in particular, um, and I know it will happen with India as well when it comes online, is just because the FTA is signed, don't assume everybody knows about it. We get machinery hitting the port in Dalian or you know, Hong Kong's a little bit easier. But what often happens is that information does not filter down to the customs clerk, the woman or the man sitting in the office. Just don't expect that they're going to all know about it just because we've got a piece of paper saying that we have an FTA. And you have to watch that because um, it can actually distort the value very significantly. And also watch your T's and C's around trading. Except that there are different standards and views of ethics and norms. Um, the issue of corruption the issue of backhanders is something that you will face, unequivocally. The issue of um, things like releasing your client list to a third party who is saying they wish to be your business partner. That client base is of tremendous intellectual property to us. So your intellectual property will exist at many levels. It's not just about the products. It's about know-how. It's about customers. It's actually relationships. Be very cautious and recognize the intrinsic value that it has. It's not just about the products and services. There is a strong demand for expertise and knowledge, without question. Um, the markets are growing so quickly. Uh, China's GDP is up about 8 9% at the moment, possibly even higher. Uh, India is not far behind. There is a very strong um, growth in the middle class, and there's a strong demand for knowledge, capability, and services. And that's there to be leveraged, and don't hesitate to charge handsomely for it, in my experience. The guys have mentioned this morning about the importance of price strategy, and there was a comment made that um, that India very much is price makers. They do work very hard to be price makers. I encourage you to think through your pricing strategy and see that differently from just sales and marketing strategy. You must think deeply about your pricing strategy in both these markets and go there prepared for it, and be prepared to work very hard to sell the value and don't just roll on price. Recognise you are actually dealing with a very highly educated workforce. Um, lots of engineers, lots of PhDs. Everybody in India has got an MBA. Um, just recognise that um, they are very smart, very technically smart. Not always necessarily particularly commercial, but very technically smart and very savvy. You will hear conflicting information from one day to the next. And it's all correct. <laughs> There's an old saying in China in particular, the mountains are high and the valleys are deep. It's a long way from the Emperor's Palace in Beijing. Be very aware of the political drivers and the political sensitivities that you trip across the further you get from Beijing. Patience is crucial in both markets, uh, absolutely essential. Dealing in these markets, we send and we go there as Kiwis. Um, we're proud Kiwis and we go there recognising that we're not Americans sometimes. Americans have a, and it was made the point there, that we're not particularly demanding necessarily as people to do business with. doesn't mean we're not serious, but we're not as demanding. The cultural simulation, the cultural alignment around ethics, business norms, about how we engage with our hosts is absolutely crucial. It's a fact of life. What we find, and unequivocally in both markets and other markets around the world, we do not get it right. But we do try to get it right. And what I would, the last point I'd like to leave you with is intent counts for more than technique. So we are seen to be making the effort to fit in with their culture. How they celebrate, how we have dinner together, we work very hard to fit in. Um, as I said, we don't always get it right, but we are recognised for the effort we make in terms of uh, our intent counts for more than technique.